Thank you. And I'm also, frankly, um, thrilled. Uh, yes, sir. Um, I'm frankly thrilled to be here. Great people, great culture, great country. And uh, but I must apologize for the way I walk. Uh, ten hours after your embassy uh, gave me a visa in Beirut. I was on the way with my motorcycle because cars aren't very good uh, traffic problem, and a nice lady looked a little like you um, uh, crashed into my motorcycle, wiped it out. Fortunately, I had a, a helmet, cracked two of my ribs, and wiped out my leg. But the good news was, since I live in the Hezbollah security zone, um, uh, they took me to uh, the Iranian hospital, Rasul. I know some of those guys, and the doctor said, well, sorry, Mr. American but we've got to keep you for four days. I, there's not a chance that that was going to happen because I also didn't have the nerve to call Dr. Mina and say I wouldn't be here. But no, ma'am, it wasn't a Saudi uh, a driver, a woman. But what, there are many Saudi uh, Arabian women who drive in Lebanon, bless them, and they are very good drivers. Hopefully uh, you will get. But uh, I thought of you when I... Uh, anyhow, uh, time short, um, uh, I'd like to mention six factors, uh, some immediate, some fundamental, and actors that I think will bear on the American policy with respect to uh, West Asia in the coming uh, months and, uh, and years. But first, I, I, I just want to reply to this idea of the uh, nuclear agreement. Someone said it's a, a game changer and, and uh, things are going to be different. Um, I don't think that's the case. Uh, necessarily because it faces two big challenges that agreement so far so good uh, it's also not true as someone said that it may be as many as 250 billion uh, for our Iranian brothers no it won't be 150 billion either which is what the Zionist lobby gave to Donald Trump in that uh, you know they're working together on this that it's 150 million they're going to do all this stuff no what they're going to get maximum in the next four years is 55 Billion. We know that now from, uh, from the team that negotiated it. We know that now from John Kerry. It's going to take the Iranians $1 billion up front to get their oil back in shape, and then they've got $4 billion worth of uh, infrastructure they've got to use. Yesterday, they got $32 billion, so they've got $20 billion left. I mean, I'm, you know, I'm sorry that the real is uh, 36000 of the black market in Tehran to the dollar. Hopefully, they'll get a lot more. But what is pretty clear is they've certainly kept of the seven Iranians and the five Americans, the day after that happened, in fact, they were on the airplane, then what? Americans sanctioned Iran again for the missiles. People were criticizing the White House, saying, oh, you're so weak, you're so weak. You said it was, gonna, it was a technical problem. Three days later, three weeks later, where are the sanctions? Well, they got the sanctions, and they're going to get more sanctions uh, depending on their compliance, not just with the nuclear deal, uh, but with their other activities in the region. But so far, uh, it's excellent. It's not a game changer, but it's a move in the uh, right direction. And you are safer, and we're all safer, and Iran is safer, because we now know they have the capacity to produce, and I don't take this from the Zionists, 10 to 12 nuclear weapons. Uh, Kerry spoke about this yesterday. 19,000 centrifuges are no longer operational uh, in, uh, in Iran. There's 131 more 24-7 IAEA inspectors there. Uh, so I think in that sense, it can go forward, but there's two big barriers to that. And uh, I think it may be a long shot that that agreement will survive the next 18 months. And, and, these are, and the two reasons I cite are these. On Tuesday, February 26th, there's going to be a very important election in Iran. They're going to elect 80 members of the uh, Council of Experts who choose the Wali Efeki after uh, Ali Khamenei. Uh, they're also going to elect a, a, uh, le their legislature. And they've got two nice, um, uh, two moderate uh, uh, people who are going to um, have a big role in this. And one is this lady I met recently in Tehran, uh, Masama Ektakar. You may know her. Again, she reminds me of you. I'm sorry, I'm not fixated on you. Because she's the lady, you remember from the grainy photos 37 years ago when there were 444 days of captivity for 61 Americans? She was that nice uh, spokesperson. 
and uh, so she's had a good career. A lot of those uh, students in the embassy have become moderates. The grandson of uh, Ayatollah Khomeini, who was rejected apparently by the assembly as a candidate, he'll still be a candidate. And, and, uh, so, but, but my point is uh, that that lady also said, you know, I came to really like Americans during the weeks we took care of you. I said, ma'am, it wasn't weeks. It was 444 days. And, and the point is that there's a, there's a tide of moderation among the young, as everywhere, and, and among women. But what's the problem with keeping this, uh, this agreement that is not a game changer is those elections. The hardliners uh, are not comfortable, and there's going to be a competition. America, uh, uh, what's his name in the Senate Foreign Relations Committee said yesterday, we're looking for another Persian Spring. Remember 209? Yeah, when we abandoned the green, uh, green Revolution in Washington, we think there's going to be something out. Maybe the CIA is there doing that. I, I, I do not know that. But that's a danger because there's a conflict. The, there's there's thir uh, 23 billion available. How much of that is going to go to the people? Is the Iranian guards who, like in, in Egypt, the military dominates the economy, they do the same in Iran, uh, are they going to take that money? What is Ali Khamenei, who's a hardliner at heart, but I think more moderate when he thinks things through, such as the nuclear agreement, that, uh, you know, that may augur well. But we don't know if it'll survive that. Another election is Friday, Friday, November 8th, uh, 10 months from now, the American presidential election. You know what's going on there very well. And one of the things that always amazes me of being in this region is how much better you are informed about us and our activities, our politics, our politics, than we are about yours. That's just a fact of life. But you know what the candidates are saying. Every Republican candidate has pledged, and they get their loudest applause lines at all these rallies when they say, we're going to torpedo that. We're going after the mullahs, and we're going to eliminate that thing. Now, will they be able to do it? Maybe yes, maybe no. Trump will likely be the Republican nominee. The winner will probably be uh, Hillary Clinton, as of now. Um, she'll be tougher, uh, but she won't abandon it. The Republicans, uh, it's, it's, it's frankly hard to say uh, what they will do. So that is the second election that I would submit to you uh, uh, will uh, be an important factor. Five other factors I'll just comment on. One is the role of the U.S. Zionist lobby. You know what they've been doing uh, and what they plan to do. And, and uh, of course, always the military industrial complex, because as you know, 70% of all the weapons in West Asia uh, come from America. The, uh, the next 25% come from NATO and France. The m biggest recipient among ISIS are American arms through Iraq and bribing the other sources, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's a, a major business. The, the arms will continue. We're not going to stop giving arms to the Saudis um, and certain other people, um, but it's, it's costly and it's beneficial to the arms industry. We've spent so far $6 billion, $11.2 million a day in the American air war uh, doing whatever they're doing. Uh, and the Russians are going to learn something about that too, I think. But the point is, and that's up $2 million a day just from June. So there's a lot of money. We've got a long history with the military complex, and the chances are that if uh, nothing happens in the next 10 months, and that's why there's pressure, there's a very good likelihood that this uh, thing will be uh, scrapped, and that going to Syria, there will be, a, there will be a, a, a ground war with American troops. On the one hand, our public, we don't want that. Uh, for a lot of reasons, but a recent poll, CNN, now 62% are willing to send American troops to Syria. That would be another disaster. But if the Republicans are in, that may happen. You know, being in this region, uh, there's a related issue among the American public, a conflict of opinion. So, there's not an American I know who can hold his head high, and I certainly can, in this region, realizing not that we just spent two trillion dollars of our money that we needed, but that we're responsible for nearly a million deaths in this country, and uh, we've caused a lot of your problems. 
uh, a recognition of that by many Americans. I'm, I'm happy, I, the last two and a half, three, no, two and a half years I've been in Syria and back and forth in Beirut. I'm frankly happy uh, when they think I'm a Canadian, which they often do, because they're, uh, they're shocked to see an American over there, or they think I'm a Russian. And I actually speak from Russian because I should have been studying Arabic, but that's, a, that's another story. So th there's that situation. There's also a factor in America the public is tired. They know we did a criminal war. They know our schools have suffered, our hospitals have suffered, our, our um, roads have uh, suffered, and we've squandered our money and your lives, and they're not happy about it. Uh, you know, American public, we're into quick Band-Aid approaches and reactions in the government. And we do, the people do have an effect on the government. In that sense, it is a democracy. Of course, there's, a, there's other major factors that you know. But it, despite those quick Band-Aids, we do learn over time. We learn over time as we did with slavery, as we did with the civil rights movement, as we did, we thought, with Vietnam. But did we? Did we learn from Iraq? Did we overlearn from Iraq with respect to Syria? There's all that conflict. But I think that the fact of the matter is that Americans have had enough. This is your area. We can't help you. You have different views, different religions, different outlook. You deal with this problem. We'll, we'll stick, of course, we, we, we're going to have to keep our, our military bases. Uh, it's cheaper to buy a, 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 a cup of uh, oil these days than water in a fancy New York, you know, water shop or a, a, a guppy sort of place. Um, we're going to, uh, access to oil is not, not a problem now. It may be in the future, but everybody, it's a buyer's market, you will agree. Down from, uh, what is it now, $29 yesterday, it was a, typically $100. So that's not the fact. I just think we're tired. You know, we want to come home. We've got our problems. We tried. We were misguided. We made mistakes. We were happy with some hegemony. Now we might concede it. If, if our brothers uh, from Persia will do a deal with Israel, and they may well, they may well. This resistance uh, is not uh, what is uh, Trump uh, advertised to be, and I know that as a fact because I'm in Beirut, and I know who is responsible for keeping the only refugees in the world on this planet from working for 64 years, so having the elementary fundamental right to work that each of you will have when you come to Beirut and, and, and step on, put your foot on that tarmac. Who is it who has given the order not to give the Palestinians the right also of home ownership? You know where that comes from. And the reason for that, because the Palestinians want to live near Palestine and they'll go to the south of Lebanon. And that's Shia country. So this is another example. I'm not going to talk about the Sacra um, um, Bellum, the so-called religious war, because it's not that. It's politics. The politicians are using that. There, I, that's why I say there are many mothers and more uh, uh, wet nurses for Daesh. You know that we all play the card. <laughs> There's nobody innocent on this. But we didn't calculate. We thought we could control that sectarianism. Nothing rallies your forces like it, the they, the evil, whoever they are, the takfiris, the Wahhabis, the terrorists, etc., etc. That's good, short term. It doesn't wash long term. And that's why we reject, I think, increasingly America, this idea, oh, it's Daesh or Assad. No, it's the third way. And you know what the third way is. International supervised elections, transition, giving, pr promoting democratic humanitarian values. The values that your people have, the Iranian people, and we all share. You've got half a century of dictatorship here, it's got to change. So in that sense, when they say all the Americans are going to work now with the Iranians, Hezbollah, and uh, the Syrian, and the Assad, I'm all for that. But that's not the case. Uh, we're not uh, in these recent no ne negotiations, people are saying, oh, we're going to accept Assad, we're going to accept the current system. That's not going to happen. But for now, we're looking forward to January 26th. Nothing's going to happen there because both sides are sure they're going to win. And they're not going to win. So we're not going to see anything in January, many, many months, until our Russian brothers get tired and they realize, and our Iranian brothers, hey, they're not going to win this. The Americans are out. They're not enthusiastic unless unless the president, the new president, sends us there. That could happen. But um, those are some points. See, 
The Zionist lobby, I won't dwell on, you know it. You know that our capital, our, our capital hill, where I live, uh, is as occupied territory as pal Palestine is. You know that. The, if the Zionists don't buy our congressmen, the arms manufacturers do. That's a fact of life. But also there's changes in America, the perception. Uh, we didn't like uh, uh, Netanyahu and all this manipulation of the nuclear file and the smearing of, of Obama as anti-Semite, as a, a closet Muslim, as an Iran lover, um, et cetera, et cetera. John Kerry, before long, is probably going to go to Iran. I, I, I'm told from a, a former colleagues that when I worked in the Congress, Obama would like to do that. I don't know if Ali Khamenei is up to it, but, but Rohana, um, it depends, again, on, a, a lot on, on this election. So I agree with a lot of what was said about ISIS yesterday. Um, it's a, uh, an amazing period. When in our lifetimes did we uh, expect any of this? But um, as, we, as we go forward, I think um, we're going to see a lessening of American involvement. I just think, I, I think that is going to happen. I mean, there's some ugly demagoguery going on. Uh, as you know, and the politicians and, and, and the writers over there, um, that uh, we want uh, immigrants, Arabs, to stay out. We're full in America. We've had enough. Let us build our country. You take care of yours, and we'll see about the future. So um, I thank you for your time. Sorry if I went over. There was a, just a few comments that uh, I, uh, I wanted to share with you, and my, I asked not for agreement, but uh, I thank you for the fair hearing you gave me on my uh, views. and. Um, God willing, um, you know, things are going to get better around here.